Hello, it's Beach Cameraman and Jack from BAM, and we are here for another update on the seawall. It's been quite a few weeks since our last video, and a lot of work has been done. So, Jack, uh, we're on platform one. What's been happening, mate? Right then, so you can see down both platforms now, on platform one and two, um, all the public announcement speakers, the CCTV, and the customer information screen, so the black screens that you can see with the, the bit of the cantilever on the side. Yeah. They've all now been installed, um, and we're just going through the testing and commissioning process at the moment. So in the next in the next week or two, they should be coming live, um, and you'll start to hear that, like all the announcements come through the speakers, the CCTV will be, op will be operational. And then also you'll be able to read all the information about the next passenger trains, etc., okay. and trains which are approaching the platforms. Um, we're wandering down the platforms today because we've started the cladding recently on the back of the L units on the right hand side. So, so these, uh, these haven't been done yet, have they? No, no. So if you remember during the blockades, we left that bit of a, a gap down the side of that channel That's just right. so we could get the cladding in, um, which the guys are starting now. I think they're about roughly about 20% of the way through at the moment. They're averaging about four panels a day between a two to three man team. Um, but as we walk down now, you'll, you'll get an understanding of what that looks like and, and how it'll improve the visual of the back of the concrete coming through the platforms. Yeah. As they work down then, we'll work behind them, filling the gap in between the trough and the units that you see on the right hand side. Okay. Um, so in total, I think through this stretch through here, there's about 96 units to do. Um, obviously we've still got the big gap where we walked past earlier, um, where the lift shaft is, that's, that's for the disabled access footbridge. Um, so that's now been instructed. Um, so the disabled access footbridge works will be being, will be taking place um, between probably the middle of September through to mid um, 2023. Okay. So we've got two main blockades that we're trying to hit for that. The first is the abnormal blockades at Christmas, yeah. which is where we're going to be doing most of the work for the foundations. So that'll be the piling works using a very similar sort of rig to what we've been using down on the beach. Okay. Um, so the plan is to lift that over with a crane, a big crane in the station car park, um, complete the foundation works, remove the rig then, and then build all the base ready for the installation of the bridge. Yeah. So you can see now we're just coming on to um, the cladding works. So the, is, is it, it's not just big slabs that you're putting on that look... No, no, so, actually, so they're, they're actually individual stones. Oh, um, wow. So every, every kind of five or six unit, you get an expansion joint, which yeah. matches up with the expansion joints, which are on the promenade. That's right, yeah, That's okay. just to allow expansion and contraction uh, of the wall. Wow, it looks impressive. Yeah, and the guys obviously haven't finished this section, so yeah, they have to point everything up. Yeah. Um, so they've done about 10 or 15 units here, maybe a bit more than that. Um, probably, probably about 20 units looking at it now. Yeah. And they're going back now and then pointing back through. So all of the materials that you can see are kind of selected and chosen by the local authorities and the council. Yeah. So, so what we have to do is prepare um, kind of a mock-up panel for the local authority. They come down and then choose. So we, we, we have chosen, um, we did choose like various different, different sorts of material. Uh -huh. um, the local authority ended up choosing this product for the back of the units. Okay. Yeah, um, so as you come back down through here then, um, Cheers, mate. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Closing off. Th this, this section will eventually be closed off. There's a floodgate to go into here. Okay. Um, so that will close off the promenade access onto the platforms, and this will be for emergency access only. Right. Um, so in the so event a, of a fire a, a in flood, the station. A floodgate here will, will be, yeah? Yeah. So okay. if there is any risk of overtopping, it will prevent that. Um, and also what it will do is allow access out of the platforms in the event of a fire. Okay. So, we walk back down the promenade now. Obviously, this has all been completed wow. um, as part of the phase phase 2A works. And then we'll, I'll, we'll finish off back down at the lift bridge where I can just run you through what we're going to be doing there. So, like I mentioned, we've got the first abnormal blockade in, over Christmas period for the foundation works. And then the second abnormal blockade, blockade is in March 2023. That's where the main bulk of the works are going to be undertaken. So lifting in all, lifting in all the lift shaft precast sections. Yeah. So this, where, where we're going to be building the lift inside of, there's a kind of a big concrete housing to support the lift. Yeah. Um, and then we've also got to lift in the actual bridge itself, the approach units, and there's also a wave protection wall on this side as well that we've got okay. to lift in, um, and various other bits of precast. So some of the lifts that we're going to be doing are around about 65, 70 tonnes in weight. Wow. Um, so there'll be a 650 ton crane sat in the car park, <laughs> which is very tight. Um, yeah. 
it does fit. We've, we've been having a look at it this week, to be honest. And the pigeons are still here. Yeah, pigeons are still there. They won't give up. No. Um, so yeah, the 650 tonne crane in the car park. That'll be used for li predominantly lifting in all those precast units as, yeah. as well as as well as some other generic lifts we're going to be undertaking. So all being well, if the blockade goes well throughout March, pretty much most of the structure will be in by the time that's finished then. And then the rest of the works, which run through till the mid middle of the year, are things like installing the actual lift inside of the concrete housing, yeah. servicing and commissioning and all of that. We have also been successful on phase four. Um, so phase four is a section of saw, saw nailing, rock anchoring, different sorts of netting, um, a few kind of rock fall shelters over the tunnel portals. Basically where you can see Morgan Sindels in the background over there. Yeah. Between um, Boat Cove, so the tunnel portal that you can see in the distance yeah. where you've got Kennaway Bridge and Kennaway Tunnel. Yeah. Between that tunnel portal and Morgan Sindels work site is where phase four will be undertaken. Okay. Um, so I think it's roughly about 1,200 metres in total okay. um, of, of embankment we need to kind of restabilise and yeah. where, where the cliff's potentially at risk of failure and things like that. So we're going oh, to be so you, going... So you're doing the cliffs, not the seawall? Yeah, yeah, okay. just the cliffs, yeah. So th throughout those sections, there's no problems with the seawall. Um, we are going to do a bit more ground investigation work just to verify that okay. and just make sure that the assumptions are correct. So, um, so, sorry, so when's phase four starting? So phase four, the ground investigation works. We've got what's known as a LIDAR survey. So that's a, that's basically a drone which goes up in the air and surveys the, the kind of profile of the, and geometry of the rock faces. Yeah. And that's what we're going to use to build the design and build the model okay. um, for where we put the soil nails and how many soil nails are needed, etc. Uh -huh. There's also ground investigation works being undertaken. So that'll be kind of drilling into the cliff face to determine what the prof what, what the competency of the material is as you drill through, um, whether you encounter anything that you, sh you shouldn't find really there. Um, but most of the assumptions just need to be validated in terms of the design and then that's, that, that's what allows us to, to progress into our detailed design and build the model further. Okay. Um, so like we've gone through in the past, this is obviously the lift shaft area. Yeah. Um, in this section here, is where the lift will sit and that's where all the piles will sit for the new uh, new bridge foundation and the lift foundation. So inside there now, there's roughly about four meters of concrete to go back down to existing beach, beach level. Okay. We are gonna be removing that because the, the found, as the detailed designs developed, the piles are much deeper than we originally anticipated okay. in, in, in the, the kind of preliminary drawings. Yeah. Um, so we are gonna be breaking that compact concrete out over the next probably starting in three weeks time for probably about four or five weeks maybe yeah um, and plan is to just sink that shaft back down build it back up and fill it full of material and that'll allow us to get the piling rig into here and then we'll be piling back down through i think the piles in this specific area are roughly about 25 to 26 meters wow. so <laughs> d even deeper than further than what we've, what, what, what we've gone before and to be honest we were we were we were pushing the limits of the rig down there, yeah. so it'll be very interesting to see how the, how the rig behaves and works so in this area. Where, where's the piling rig going to be? Where's it coming in from? Or so the piling rig, um, there'll be a crane sat directly opposite opposite okay. us in the car park, so it'll be probably a 150 or 200 ton crane. Yeah. I, I had a meeting with one of the crane, potential crane suppliers yesterday to look at lift radiuses. Um, that'll determine the size of the crane, really. The piling rig itself is 14 tons. So that'll be lifted over the track, will it? Yeah, yeah. Right but we can sp split that down a little bit further to allow us to bring a smaller crane in. Okay. Uh, and what we'd look at doing is mobilizing the crane prior to a Saturday night possession. So maybe four or five weeks time, um, we, we would on the possession on a Saturday night, we bring the cr crane in prior to the possession, set it up, which takes about two hours, roughly three hours to rig a 152 to 200 ton crane. Once it's rigged up and the possession's taken, we'd bring the rig down then already in this kind of disassembled pieces, lift it over in sections and then reassemble it over this side with the crane. The crane would then finish for the shift, demob, and then it'd be gone basically by the time everybody's wow. woke, woke, woken up and realised <laughs> realize what's happened. Um, so you that's have, it. Have that, to let me know when that, that happens. Yeah, and yeah. You're more, more than welcome it. to come down. So that, like I said, that's only a smaller crane, 150, 200 tonne. Um, but the bigger crane that we're going to be having in the blockade for lifting in the precast, that's a 650 tonne. Wow. So a lot more ballast and a lot more counterweight on the back of the yeah. crane, which allows us to lift, obviously, a, a lot um, more in terms of weight. 
This section here will then be the, where the foundations are formed for the new stairs which come down. They're going to come down from there, aren't they, to this Yeah, they, they end roughly where the end of that, the, the, the oh, kind yeah. of concrete channel is there. Yeah. And then once, once the bridge and once the stairs are all in, all of this area in front of us will be resurfaced just to, match, to, to line up to the new kind of gradients and cross walls across the platform so, that, so the drainage works properly. Um, through intersection uh, C now, I, even I'll get confused with the sections <laughs> these days. We're just progressing in every, every sort of angle and direction at the moment. This is basically ready for granite sets. Um, so as you walk up the wall, there's viewing platforms, which you've seen before. Yeah. Um, they've got pink Portuguese granite in it. The whole area that you see in front of us will have pink Portuguese granite. The only thing that'll be different to those viewing platform areas up there is there'll be some streaks of grey granite running through and that basically replic replicates where we've put the arches in the front yes. of the wall. Oh, okay. So it'll basically they'll be in line with where the arches are on the front face of the new wall and also on the front face of the old wall because that's, that's how we built and developed yeah. um, the facing panels which sit at the front. So that'd be a bit more of a kind of heritage touch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and kind of nice feel. And then as we come back down into section B now, which is basically from where the end of the station building is. I think things have developed quite a bit since you've been down here. So. Absolutely, I know a lot of people are excited to see what's been going on this end. They've been watching from Seabreeze Cam, but can't quite see exactly what's happening in the details. So, oh wow, this concrete. So this is all pretty much up, up there, ready for granite sets in this area. Yeah. It's just, just need to final skim of regulating concrete run through. I think you just had the framing long here, didn't you, last time we come, was it? Or? Yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah. So the stairs have now been installed. Um, we can walk down and, and video them from back up. You can't really, get, you don't really get a sort of scale on how big they are from, from up above. But they're, they're basically installed in four units. Each unit weighs about 14 ton. Again, precast supply eyes from Shea Mert are over in Ireland. Um, there'll be hand railing on the left and hand railing on the right, the same sta stainless steel hand railing that we've got down at Coast yeah. Guards. Um, Just one question, Jack. One of the VIPs asked is why, why that's higher than the, the other wall. Uh, that's higher than the other wall because where, where the stainless steel hand railing that comes across here yeah. comes into the edge of the stair unit, uh -huh. it butters, butts up straight against it. Right, I'll have with you. So yeah. if we could have made it the same height all the way through, but you'd have ended up with more restricted view. Yeah. Um, so that, that basically the fencing just ties into there. And that'll, that'll hit, right, I'm with yeah. you. Okay. And then as you come down the stairs, then that's just to achieve compliance on, on, on kind of British standards and regulations for um, minimum height distances that you have to have above the step units on each tread. Yeah. So it's all designed to, to work out to be specific levels so that you achieve those um, standards. You, you, yeah, so you meet those standards. Uh, yeah, well, we'll have a wonder down. You can have a little look back up. I suppose, I suppose it's worth having a bit of a discussion about section A while we're still up here, because it's quite a good quite a good viewpoint, really. Yeah. Um, so you can see the, the pre-cash units that we've started installing in the middle there. Um, those are very similar L units to what we use on the track side. Those four units that you see directly in front of us will have beams placed on top of them, and yeah. they will act as what's called a closed culvert. So that will allow people to walk from Marine Parade at the lower level over to this side of the, the Stillen Basin. Yeah. On the right hand side then, that will be an open channel and on the left hand side that will also be open channel through those sections. Okay. The steelwork that you can see sit sitting up there, that's the new pier, or that's going to be part of the new pier, which is for the link bridge which joins the kind of high level promenade and marine parade over in the distance yeah. to so the units that you see on the right hand side here. Okay. So on the right hand side now, that's the steelwork for the abutment which forms part of the link bridge. So in total, there is two abutments and two piers. Yeah. Um, this will be the northern abutment. Then you've got the northern pier, which is in line with the existing railway bridge wall that you see over there. Yeah. The southern pier, which I was just discussing about, and then the southern abutments yet to be built at the moment. Okay. So again, the, the stairs that you can see, um, they've all been designed with a cross fall in. Um, they have not been put in not level, yeah. <laughs> just before anybody <laughs> asks that question. <laughs> that, that's to allow rainfall to run off, basically, from, right, what, okay. from one side to the other. Um, and like I mentioned, you'll have a, a, steel work, a stainless steel hand railing on the left and a stainless steel hand railing on the right. When you come down the stairs then, you'll walk round the corner and then down onto the ramp on the beach, which is where they've kind of got the mute yeah, stored we, at the moment. Yeah, we were down here filming last time. Yeah, it's got everything, yeah. everything stored off. We have still got quite a significant amount of sand around there, just protecting the work area and giving yeah. us as much space as you can. We need, we need it for the storage of all the steel, yeah. the storage of all the plant, storage of the 70 tonner. Um, 
since your last video, we have also had to do some more works on the track of the 70 tonner. Oh, okay. Um, so we had another issue. Um, there was one part which was on back order um, when we replaced the tracks of the 70 ton, and that wasn't replaced when, when you were here last time when they were doing all the other work. Yeah. Um, so that part arrived and, and we've now fitted that into the machine. So that should be good for another couple of months, I hope so. Brilliant. Without any more mechanical failures. So in probably the next four to five weeks time, we're going to be looking at diverting the temporary channel back over to the permanent alignment. Okay. And that is where it will stay then. All of this channel will, will then be infilled with concrete. Yeah. And that'll allow us to start fully building out and fully prepping this area ready for surfacing. Okay. So the guys have been in today. Um, they've been pouring behind the precast blocks there. Um, so this will be the edge of the, the, the closed culvert. Yeah. And you'll be able to walk over that section, which where I was just mentioning, the beams are going to be installed over. Yeah. And then all of this in, in the middle of us will be open. So there'll be some stepped units in here to allow maintenance and access down into the channel. Uh -huh. um, and then you'll have kind of an edge protection on both sides and people will, will be able to sit on both areas then. Wow. So we'll have a wonder down. Again, over the last probably, I don't know, six weeks, we've just been getting out the ground really. So it, you can't really see much of it on these videos. I, I did post some photos in the VIP group um, That's right, yeah. on, 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 the, um, on, on your website about all the kind of foundation works which you've been doing in here. But basically, what these L units are sat on is a reinforced pile cap. That's about a metre thick and it ties all of the piles which we installed with that, the big piling rig yeah. together. Uh, so the actors, the, the act and um, transfer all the loads together rather than as individual piles. Uh -huh. Each of the L units that you see in front of us then is then tied down through the reinforced pile cap and into the pile beneath um, with a two metre core. So the guys core down into it after everything's installed and then they drop the 57 and a half mil dowel bars in, which are those bar big, big things, bars yeah. sticking up there, yeah. Just to give you uh, an idea of size. Yeah, can't even get my arm around it. <laughs> <laughs> so the pile caps are at different levels as you come up and we tie back into the existing stream then. So where the guys have been breaking out that, that wall that you can see over there, that's to allow us to get a precast unit into there. Yeah. And there's also a precast unit in here. And like I mentioned earlier, that, that steelwork that you see sticking up there will have a load more steelwork tied onto it and that will form the base for yeah. the southern pier. Wow. So this is actually the this is the floor of the what was the floor of the brook before, isn't it? So we'd be stood in where the brook was yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the existing granites that you see up there, yeah. that, that's that's where the, the water would have run over to be honest. Yeah. And it was extreme as you can imagine really working next to any water cause. Working down in the ground here yeah, was an absolute nightmare to manage all yeah, the water. I bet. I bet. Especially obviously with, with some of the bigger springs which we had as well, where we had to increase the size of the buns round yeah. to prevent this area getting flooded. We did have one particular instance about a week and a half ago where the whole excavation was flooded out. So the guys had prepped all the steel, ready to go for the pour. One of the pumps had a mechanical issue overnight, so it wasn't pumping water throughout the day, uh, throughout the night. And then when the next when the next shift came in to undertake the concrete pour, the whole excavation was full of water. Oh no! So obviously once that happens, you have to clean everything back out. There's obviously a lot of sand and silt that gets washed in and things like that. Behind then. Yeah. So. Oh, it was only a shift clearing back out, but oh, it's okay. just things you can't really allow for. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll be stood where we're stood now and walking through. This will be where the where Dawlish water basically is diverted back through. Yeah. The existing alignment and width of Dawlish water that you see up above there runs through until roughly about where the, the pile is that you can see in the background and then it displays out to return into this unit here and it opens into a much wider channel. Okay. That's just to allow obviously in, in in the event of a flood or in the event of heavy rainfall upstream yeah. it allows the capacity more capacity on the front right, end. okay so we come round the corner back up here then and you can see the blocks where the guys have hit some of the bars with the machines so <laughs> they need to be straightened back out which is not a nice job not um, sure. and th they, this will form the edge of where the still in basin is so there's going to be yeah so it'll so end here and then it'll be the beach and the sea from this point, will it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There is what's known as an eel ramp that's going to be constructed in front as part of the environmental, um, as part of, when we were applying for the environmental permit, it was one of the conditions that the environmental agency had, yeah. was that we install an eel ramp at the front of the... Okay, wow. So in here, there'll be a load of seating and then it'll basically tie back into Marine Parade 
where you can go up the disabled access ramp on Marine Parade and across the Link Bridge, or you can go basically back underneath the underpass. And so what's, I know you can never give a date, but what sort of, what, when you're looking at sort of having this bit? Um, so what, what was originally delaying us was the, the gas main. That's right. And there was also the Do Dawlish, roughly where the, the kind of golf course is and the burger hut that you see in the background. Yeah. There's a big pumping station, so all the foul sewerage from Dawlish goes into the pumping station and then it gets pumped elsewhere from, from that location. And what there is, is a foul sewer, there's, there's an overflow pipe of that foul sewer for the, for the foul sewerage, which basically ran straight the way underneath the work area and underneath the breakwater. Yeah. And we were also waiting for the consent from Southwest Water for that to get diverted as well. Um, right, okay. So we've had everything now, everything's been diverted. That was what was preventing the piling yeah. rig from going. Um, so all the piles are now installed and the piling rig's gone. And what that allows us to do now is dig everything back out. Obviously when the piling rig was working, there's a load of temporary work requirements, load of working platforms that are needed just to support the rig. And, yeah. and so the rig can operate. And we couldn't dig any of them out until the piling works were completed. Right. So I think the piling works finished on the 10th of August. That's right, yeah. Um, and on the 11th, um, Julian came to pick up oh. um, from Cracker Marine Services. Julian came to pick up the rig uh, and that's now gone. The only other time that Cracker Marine Services are going to be coming back in now, well, hopefully the only time, unless we have any major mechanical failures with machines is to basically get rid of all the machines at wow. the end um, so look, we're going to keep this this amount of plant as it is to be honest with you it's, it's nice just to have two machines here rather yeah. than a big pile and rig another machine on top of that it gives a you a bit more mutes, space yeah. doesn't it yeah and because yeah. because over the next couple of weeks now this is just going to evolve so quickly and yeah. you'll, you'll start to see us build out the ground i mean towards the back end of next week we're looking at putting the beams on top of these units here so that'll box all that closed culvert off We've got the, the reinforced slab to cast between the two L units um, over next week and get all that stitched up. Yeah. And you'll really start to get an understanding of, of the, the size and, and, and scale of this area. Amazing. So I would say probably around about four to five weeks time, like I mentioned, the water should be flowing back through this area here. Wow. Um, so po possibly for our next tour then? Possibly for our next tour. <laughs> to be honest, I'll try and time it for it. <laughs> yeah. Or time the tour around the move, should yeah, I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than the, tour, the, the move around yeah, the tour. Yeah, that'll be best. Um, so Marine Parade, we opened that back up um, last Friday, just to give people more access through during the summer holidays. Yeah. Um, we've kept it all open all over the weekend and through this week. And we're planning to keep it open throughout the bank holiday weekend. Um, from Tuesday onwards then we do need to close it because we need to get back down in there to, to kind of break back down the piles which we installed and then start the foundation works over there. Right okay um, yeah so if you want to visit the beach under the viaduct you need to do it before Tuesday. Yeah okay. So we thought we'd leave it for after bank holiday idea, and yeah. kind of kids kids are going back to school in, in the next week or two really as well Yeah. and um, so we're leaving it as long as we can um, and if we can leave it any longer than that we, we will do so. Yeah. Um, just keep an eye on the Network Rail page for that as well, um, because they do obviously mention and, and update people on a regular basis on which weekends it is going to be open. When we do close it, it's going to be closed for about three weeks, and then we're going to review the possibilities of opening it back up every other weekend again when we're not working. Okay. Um, and then one of the other things that we're also going to be doing shortly is the guys are pretty much out of the ground now. Um, you know, it's been hard work doing so but they're pretty much there after the last couple of days that we've had. Um, and none of this really kind of will flood from, well, flood from a tired, should I say, not, not flood from overtopping or anything, but wouldn't flood from a tired, um, especially with the bund that we've got here created protecting yeah. us. So we're at, in the next, um, I think it's the 5th of August, we're basically going to give the guys a break from tidal work and, you know, they've been on it for the best part of two and a half years now. <laughs> yeah. We will be still working around the clock, uh, but we're going to change the shift time to just a day and a night shift. So the, the, each shift will do two weeks of days and then two weeks of nights and then two weeks of days and then two weeks of okay. nights. Just to manage fatigue a little bit better because, you know, people, people are kind they, of getting a They bit... have been working hard, no one can deny that. Yeah, I did yeah. fly, fly the drone right out to sea and to show the sort of scale in it and it's now shows like you can see it now you now shows how little is left to do in this section yeah. you know you've got the big wall uh, down K king's walk and this one by the station so yeah, yeah. closer than ever Amazing. And it would be nice just for them to get back into a routine really i mean man managing a tidal job is very difficult as well because you forget who you're going to see and when so so <laughs> yeah. I, I, I forget some days i go into work in the morning and i think oh god they've jumped two hours this morning yeah i need someone to do a job and end up having to, you end up having to do it yourself <laughs> yeah. there's nobody there yeah <laughs> But it'll be nice just to get people back into a rhythm, back into a routine, and um, and then 
also, while we're going to be doing that, there'll be possessions every other Saturday night um, okay. up on the railway line, just getting us prepared for the bridge. Um, right. So, it, so everything's prepared, ready for Christmas for the blockades, and then the following um, blockade in, in March. So. Brilliant. So hopefully the next tour, there's, there's loads more to see. Definitely loads more to see. I mean, the, just the start of this week, there was nothing in front of us. Um, right. You know, we, we, we were still casting the pile cap that you can see in the background over there so just yeah. just in the space of this week has changed shape and the guys have had a really good week of getting everything in and i'm just excited to see how it's going to develop really yeah, over absolutely. the next, well, next three four weeks because like i said we've been in the ground for so long no, again. should be able to see a bit more on sea breeze cam of what's happening then now it's all coming out of the ground so that'd be great yeah yeah i mean with with sea breeze cam you you have got the advantage where we're stood now this is all, all the open channel and there's loads of slab, basin slabs to install in here. Yeah. Um, they've got like little rock pools oh, right, in so to, we'll to, to land oh, marine well, okay. and You'll be able to see all those going from up there. I might, I might zoom that camera in a bit so it gets a bit closer then. Yeah, yeah. definitely cool. would recommend it. Right, um, so as usual, if there's any questions or if there's any comments or if anyone wants to know anything, please pop them in the chat. Um, we're more than willing to answer them. Right. Thanks very much then, Jack, for another brilliant tour. Um, if you want to watch what's happening live, just go to our Sea Breeze cam. It runs 24-7. You can see what they're doing. It's going to get exciting now. They're working out the ground. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And then um, we, shall, we shall do another one in what, four or five weeks again. Yeah, definitely. And like I say, as, as usual, if there's any questions, any, any kind of information that you want, please put it in the chat um, on Neil's VIP page. Or if you, if you do have any questions via YouTube or anything, just stick them in the comments and I'll look to answer them on the next tour. He, he, he always does have a look at them, so yeah, put, please put your questions in there. That's Thank negative or positive as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 it doesn't matter. Right, thanks all for watching and we shall see you for another tour next month. Right, thanks again, Neil. Cheers, bye.